Hello, friends. Welcome. Thank you for practicing with me. This will be just a little bit of a shorter um, sequence of restorative yoga postures. So this is a great practice to take for stress relief. Um, restorative yoga in general is um, very good for stress relief, and it's very supportive of the body. We're going to use props today, so we're not having to worry about, you know, trying to move the muscles at all. We're just going to try to release. So one of the points of um, why we do restorative yoga is we're trying to take the body from where it lives most of the time in the sympathetic nervous system. So that is considered fight or flight. And so the body's kind of always on. We're always reacting to things. What we're trying to do in restorative yoga is to take that and switch it into the parasympathetic nervous system. So that's the opposite of that, or our rest and digest. So this is what we're looking for as we practice these shapes. It's also the reason why we take a little bit more time in these shapes, why we use the props, and why you'll find some um, time of silence while we practice as well. We'll take some movement, we'll take some um, different stretches to feel during these shapes, but you'll also find quite a bit of um, stillness. So I have included a link to a playlist. If you would like to play my restorative music, feel free. Or you can play any kind of spa music, nature music. Um, you do want to try to avoid um, music with too many words in it because that'll kind of keep you um, like on and paying attention, whereas you want to be able to drift off. And know that in restorative yoga, if you fall asleep, you get extra points is what I always say. So for today's practice, the shapes that we're going to take, it would be nice if you had a strap, but if you don't, it's absolutely okay. It's not necessary. If you don't have a strap, you could also either um, use a tie or um, you can use a scarf that you could tie into a knot. It'll just be a little bit more supportive. Um, it's always nice to have a blanket handy in case you need it, but you might not. And then we do want something today to um, boost us up a little bit. So whether that is a yoga bolster or if you have like a couch cushion or just couch pillows, um, pillow from your bed, body pillow, whatever you have. You can also do um, this first shape where we're going to use the block uh, with the um, where we're going to use this padding with a block. So you might know supported bridge with a block, and if you have a block, feel free to use that. So we are going to go ahead and work ourselves in. If you do want to start the playlist, feel free to do so. So I'm going to bring my prop right to my pelvis the back and know that you could always stack a blanket on top of the bolster if you want I know this one's going to be high enough for me but if you wanted a little bit more lift you can bring a blanket on top you could also have a blanket underneath the seat or legs if you would like so lift yourself up onto your prop just so you're lifted up a little bit you're really just sitting right on the edge keep the knees bent and one elbow at a time begin to work yourself down take your time here you can scoot forward a little bit and you're going to bring yourself all the way down. Now, you might need to adjust a little bit as you get here. So make sure the feet are planted, the knees are up. And what I want this prop to do underneath me is to support my pelvis. So I want it down pretty low. So if you know where your sacrum is or your tailbone, that's where you want this to be. You don't want the prop to be up higher so that the sacrum is hanging off. And see, this is accentuating my lumbar curve. There's benefits to doing this, but not for long periods of time. So we want it to be more supportive. So make sure it's down low enough. The arms can be how you'd like. So you could have the arms down by the side. You could also find cactus arms or reach the arms up over the top of the head and find a diamond shape. And just maybe close the eyes and start to settle in in our first shape. So this is restorative bridge. So it is a very mild inversion. If you do have glaucoma or high blood pressure, if you find that lifting your hips above your heart bothers you, then please remove the block from underneath the body. You can do all of these shapes we're gonna take without any props. This also could be the case if you're on your moon cycle. In certain days, if things are feeling like they're coming forward or up and you don't like that, then again, just remove the prop. You don't have to have the hips lifted. Settling in to the first variation of restorative bridge.
Yogis, let's take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale, and release. We'll take some just gentle hip stretches here. So keep the left foot planted down on the earth and very gently just hug the right knee in towards the chest. You can hold on in front of the shin or even interlace the fingers behind the back of the thigh if you would like. Maybe just a very gentle encouragement of that knee in towards the shoulder. So we're creating just a little bit of a healthy compression in the front of the right hip joint. So squeezing that in, eventually when we release it, lots of high speed, fresh blood will come to the area, helping it to heal. You can stay exactly where you are, or if you'd like, you could lengthen your left leg out long away from you. So make sure the heel is down on the earth. We don't need a core workout here, so you don't need to keep the leg lifted. Let the heel land down. And maybe you notice that doesn't work for you, and then just replant that foot. You've taken this variation, you'll rebend into the left knee, plant the sole of the foot back down, releasing that right leg and letting it land down next to the left. We'll take it to the other side, this time hugging the left knee in towards the chest. And again, you can interlace the fingers over the shin if you'd like, or perhaps behind the thigh. Again, we're not trying to pull or yank here. We're just creating a very gentle compression. And you might notice that you feel this very differently left to right. It'll depend kind of how your hip um, lines up and how you're reaching, if you're reaching compression here. So you can always move the knee a little bit out to the side if that feels better. Staying exactly where you are or taking a little bit longer and lengthening that right leg out. So we've got an asymmetrical shape here. So we're creating compression in the front of the left hip joint while we're actually extending the right. So stretching out the hip flexors on the right side, maybe the psoas, the things that tend to work all day long, we're letting those release. Couple breaths like this. If you straighten that right leg out, rebend the right knee and plant both soles of the feet down onto the earth. From here, you can stay exactly where you are, readjust if you need, or I'll give you the option to lengthen both legs out long this time. So lengthening both legs out long, again, allows the fronts of the hips to open. So we spend most of our day in a 90 degree angle sitting. At whether it be at a desk or driving cars, sitting in chairs. So we tend to always have that 90 degree angle. So this is allowing us to open it to a, either 180 degrees or a little bit even beyond that. So it allows hopefully our hip flexors to open a little bit the fronts of our hips. Again, the arms can be where they like. Maybe you reach up them up over the top of the head that gives you a little bit of traction in the spine. So just melt yourself down into the prop that you're using. Allow yourself to relax. If you feel any tension, try to readjust the body so that you don't feel that tension anymore. Taking one more nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale, and release. Rebend into the knees. You can bring the arms down by the sides if you'd like. Plant the soles of the feet down. And then very gently hug both knees into the chest. You can take a little rock right and left on your prop if that feels good. If it doesn't, feel free to skip it. We're gonna find Vipritta Karani, or legs up the wall, or sometimes called waterfall pose. So just let your legs come up towards the ceiling. You can keep a gentle bend in your knees. You could flex the toes in gently if you'd like, but you don't have to. 
So legs up the wall, such a beautiful restorative posture to take, really helps to calm the nervous system. The fact that we have ourselves propped up, if we do, is giving us a little bit of support. If you are not using the prop underneath you, I would recommend going over to a wall. And know that you can always take this variation with your legs literally up the wall. So you bring yourself as close to the wall as you can and just send your legs up. So the heels are touching the wall, so it's very supportive. This is a really nice shape to take right before bed. It helps to slow things down. This one helps also to reverse the flow of fluid. So if you find you have pooling in the ankles or swelling around the ankles, I call them cankles, because you can't really tell where the calf ends and the ankle begins. If you get that, especially when you travel, this is a nice way to counter it. So it allows that extra fluid just to start to drain down into the body where it can be excreted and we no longer need it. So a good way to counter that. Just take a couple breaths here. And then our last variation of supported bridge, just begin to let the knees bend. So as you let the knees bend, the knees will come in towards the chest. Maybe your thighs reach your chest, maybe not. The heels can be out here or in. It depends on how you feel. You can hold on behind the back of the thighs, but you don't have to. So this is a supported happy baby. Know that you can gently flex the feet if you'd like and maybe let the knees come out a little bit farther away from one another. So again, the nice thing about this variation is we don't have to hold on to ourselves. We can let the arms relax down. And again, maybe you'd like a little rock right and left. A lot of times this will be a little nice massage for the kidneys. Again, if it doesn't feel good, then skip it. Gently coming to a stop into the center. Let the feet plant back down onto the earth. And then very gently press your feet into the earth to lift your hips up and move the bolster down a little bit. So you can just roll it down. It's eventually going to be kind of underneath the knees. And we can just be here in a supported Shavasana for a moment. So we're just letting everything settle. So the bolster underneath the knees can be a little bit more supportive for the lower back. And that was a gentle back bend. So we're just letting that neutralize. Just take a couple breaths here. Beautiful yogis. So we'll move into our second shape. You can actually stay down pretty close to the floor as long as your strap is nearby, but otherwise just kind of press yourself up. We're just gonna move the bolster down a little bit. So the bolster is gonna come down more towards the bottom of your mat. It's going to be underneath your feet. Now I like to use a blanket. So I bring a blanket to pad the back of my head and my shoulders, but know that you don't have to do that. We are going to find a constructive rest. So I'm gonna set you up into this shape and then we're gonna do um, some readings and you're just gonna relax, feeling the benefits of the posture. Now, if you do have a strap, this would be where you would use it. So we want it about um, hips width distance. So untangle your strap, it's tangled. There we go. And then slide it over the feet and bring it above the knees and then tighten it as much as you need to. So try to make sure that the metal or plastic piece isn't on your body because that won't be comfortable. And you can tighten it maybe just so that you're about hips width distance. And again, if you don't have a strap here, you don't need it. The strap is just so that you really don't have to um, have any engagement at all, but you can accomplish that without a strap too. So you can see that my toes are on the bolster here or whatever pillow that you have. So it's kind of supportive for the arches of my feet. My heels are on the earth. And then I'm slowly going to lower myself down. So I do want my knees to be at about a 90 degree angle. So you can adjust as you need here. 
And you're gently going to let the knees tent in. So when you do that, you might find you need to um, tighten the strap a little bit if you want. But again, don't have to have a strap. Adjust the feet as you would like. So this is constructive rest. And this is such a beautiful shape. It really helps to support and release the ankles, the feet, the calves, also helping with the psoas. So the psoas is one of our major hip flexors. It's part of our core. It what helps us to walk and we're almost always using the psoas. So allowing the psoas to start to release helps us definitely to get into our parasympathetic nervous system. Now, if you'd like an arm variation here, again, you can have the arms however you would like, but I will offer letting you cross your elbows over your chest. Now, some people, when they do this, it feels really claustrophobic and they don't like that. So feel free to skip it if it doesn't feel good in your body. We'll do both um, sides, so it doesn't matter what arm is in front. I like to spin my palms up. And so I'm just gonna settle in here. And again, we'll be here for a while, so take your time to make yourself comfortable. I'll be doing some readings and also letting you have some periods of just silence or just listening to the soft music. Again, this is a very calming posture, just helping us to release and relax. So the readings that I'm doing today are from Melody Beattie's book, Journey to the Heart. And this passage is entitled, Believe in Life, Not Loss. Believing in life means we can trust. Trust in the nature and rhythm of life with all its constant change. We believe in transformation, change, and purpose. Believing in life means we're not in bondage to the past. No matter what we've done, what decisions we've made, we set ourselves free to trust ourselves now. We trust what we feel. We trust what we know. We trust what we think we need to do next. Believing in life means we trust that the lessons we're learning are real. They're valuable and divinely ordained, even when learning a lesson means feeling pain. Believing in loss means we focus on the grief, on the pain, on the tragedy on the inescapable reality of certain events. Believing in loss means we get fixated on what was taken from us, what we did wrong. We judge ourselves and our lives harshly. Believing in loss often means we stay stuck. We're afraid to let go of a person, place, or thing that's no longer right for us because we're afraid to lose anything more. Do you believe in loss or do you believe in life? Believing in life means it's okay to let go. We can trust where we've been, we trust where we're going, and we're right where we need to be now. Believe in life.
Yogis, if you've taken that arm variation and you'd like to switch it, go ahead and let the arms open and then cross the opposite arm on top. Again, working your way in or finding any other variation that you would like. Letting the earth and your mats completely support the weight of the body. Continue to soften in here. Yogis, if you've taken the crossed arm variation, begin to uncross the arms. And then working out of this, we're just going to find a nice final rest in the Shavasana. So you can lengthen your legs long. You could bring that bolster back underneath your knees as we had it earlier. If the strap becomes annoying, you can remove it to the side or you can lengthen it a little bit if it doesn't bother you. Just having the, um, the bolster behind the knees is more supportive. You bring a blanket over the body if you want to settle in. Taking a little bit of time here. I'm going to end with another reading, and I want you to feel free to stay in Shavasana as long as it's calling to you. So Shavasana is a really nice way for us to just somewhat reset and just take a little bit of a rest. And again, if you want to take a Shavasana nap, that is absolutely always okay with me. So the last reading I'll do again is from Journey to the Heart. And this one's called, Sometimes the Road Gets Rough. Don't be dismayed when you come to a pothole, a detour, a stretch of rough and rocky road. Don't be surprised. Slow down a little, be patient. It's not the whole journey. It's not the way it'll always be. But it is part of your journey too, part of your journey to your heart and soul. Even when we're living with joy and freedom, we continue to learn, grow, feel, experience. And the road can still get rough. Happiness doesn't mean feeling gleeful all the time. Happiness doesn't mean the road we're traveling is always smooth. Happiness means feeling all we need to feel and accepting each part of the journey, even the changes of course and direction. Feel all your feelings. 
Feel your fear and frustration about slowing down, then settle in for the ride. You may not be going as fast as you'd like, but the journey hasn't stopped. You're not doing anything wrong. You're going slower, but you're still moving forward. Yogis, I thank you so much for practicing with me today and taking a little bit of time for yourself. Again, restorative yoga, usually accessible to almost anyone and a very beautiful practice, especially nice for stress relief. So be sure and share this practice with your friends and family. Do it often on your own whenever you feel called to. The light and love in me, season honors the light and love in each of you. Namaste.